Welcome to Wakeboarding Unleashed, the first level, Lake Powell. So really the beginning of the campaign. Campaign? Playthrough. Um, Career. Pro Quest Mode, I don't know pro what it's called. Pro Quest Mode. I don't know what it's Adventure called. Adventure Mode. Challenge Mode. I don't know what it's called in this game. I think it's called Career. We're just going to call it Career. This is the start of the career. And of course, once you start a level, you're presented with some objectives. Mainly, you know, do a bunch of tricks, or do some grinds, or, you know, manual a certain distance, or find people to, to interact with. Which usually involves hitting them. Persuade them to swim, that's what it said. So you start off each level in groove mode, which is kind of like the free ride mode. Uh, that's where you can complete the objectives. There, you no, you'll no, you noticed that there were also some challenges in the level, but I didn't have any of them unlocked. Uh, you know, once I do gaps or complete uh, objectives, basically once I get the percentage of the game that I've actually completed up, I'll unlock the. Uh, challenges that's that's sort of a nice system that it's not just uh challenges or objectives you know it's it's uh they, they've got both they were able to add both and the uh, challenges are stuff where like each challenge is separate and you can only complete uh one of them at a time really and those are stuff like you know collect 40 stars throughout the level or uh, you know, do a combo, collect these letters while you're in a combo. Basically like the combo mode in some of the later Tony Hawk games. Or you'll be like, hit hit the targets, you know, go off these gaps and do them correctly. But in the, gro in the groove mode, it's mainly just to get you uh, familiar with the level, to get you, I guess, familiar with tricking, if you haven't played a game like this before. Um, familiar with... Uh, crashing. I'm a little uh, sorry for this performance right there. <clears throat> if, if it makes you feel any better, I could do the, the track and then you could put that on the internet. Will that be the bonus video? Blank Tester attempts an LP oh, of... Oh uh, god. I always thought, I always thought uh, we should have a bonus series where you try to do a game that I've LP'd using only my LP as a uh, walkthrough, or, st or a strategy, or as knowing what to do, really. Yep, not gonna happen. Uh... You could set out on your own if you want. You can, I don't do it in this level, but the little uh, branching yellow and red arrow thing you saw up on the left is a path switch. Basically, if you get close to one of those and you activate it, the boat's path will change, so it'll go to a different area of the level. That's cool. So yeah, there's there's some areas that you wouldn't see unless you completed those. And uh, the uh, challenge to grind the secret rail is a little annoying. It's, it's, it's an example of, I guess, one of the small things in the game, or I guess one of the things that's just going to be inherent in the game, because it's the way it is. Sure, you can, you can release uh, from the rope at any point and go flying off, and that opens up a lot of stuff to do, but you have to be pretty precise on uh, when you do so. Like, you have to know when you're going to be flying in a straight line towards whatever the game wants you to hit. And that can be kind of tough, because you've got... Basically, you could ramp off one part of the water at, at the next point, and then ramp a foot later the next point, or you could get a certain amount of air one point, or less amount of air the other point. It seems like there's a lot of trial and error to, to land on. Specific thing. Land on a specific thing. So it's better when the game gives you kind of a wide area. Oh, the, the, yeah, the branch thing, yeah. So, so each level usually has some uh, challenges that are the same. There's There are some challenges that show up in one level, but then not the next, but then shows up in the third one. Like endurance challenge to you know, complete the tricks in order and land them in succession. Those show up in the first few levels, you know, so it 
makes you do tricks you might otherwise not do. That's cool. That's really cool. It's, I mean, it gives you a certain amount of variety to the game. The game is really good at introducing you to stuff and having you do stuff you otherwise wouldn't do. Like the, uh, the count to five challenge, this is what I was talking about with the combo challenge. And these are, these are usually nice because you can trust in the boat and the boat will usually, uh, the boat will usually make things easy on you. Like I didn't jump right there, the boat's just moving at speed where I fly off the rail and I can land on the next one. Like I, usually I don't have to do a whole lot of messing Micro around, managing. micromanaging. Now on some, I kind of do, but uh, those challenges, the uh, count to five and then you saw a count to ten later, which just doubles the amount of time you have to be in your combo, basically. Um, you know, th those do usually let you do them without very much stress, because you can count on the boat. And then also the Star Search one, which I think is next. Or no, Boat Race. Okay, uh, each level uh, has a boat race. You drive the boat, you... Try to complete laps without running out of fuel. Oh. Huh. Uh, I mean, controls for the boat are all right. X is go, and then you can turn. It's it's not super floaty, but if you do get out of the water, it's you basically it's just like restart. You're not getting back in. And there are there are nitro boosts as well. But you don't really get to use them because you have to use them while you're on solid ground. Like, not on the water. Not on the water. What? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe it's they're supposed to be to save you. Yeah. Well, in other levels, there are small little, like, ramp bumps. Like, on, on the left and right, I guess I could uh, just go onto one of them and then briefly boost, but. You're, you're going to be fast enough to get to the checkpoints. The main challenge in the boat race is conserving your fuel. Because if you pick up all the fuel cans on your first lap, you're going to run out of fuel before you finish the race. So you've got to leave some left, which the boat has a really big hitbox, so you got to uh, give more room than you think. Star search is just, you know, collecting the stars, uh, but usually they're all in one tricking line. Like, once you get one and you stay on, on the line, you can complete a, you can get a whole bunch of them in a row, like you can see. Like, they kind of suggest... They group them together. They kind of suggest to you uh, tricking paths in the level. It's not like... It's not like there's, you know, one all the way out to the right, and then you have to swing straight over to the left. You know, usually... Usually if you get set up, you can... Uh, you can just go from one to the other. Do you have to get all of them? No, uh, you need to collect 30, but there's more than 30 uh, okay. in the I level. Was, I was thinking, like, there's... You're, you're missing some. Yeah. Up to 35, such. I, And there's some more right here, but I think, like, you can't really mess around too much. Like, if you miss half of them early on... I don't know if they stay throughout the whole level. I mean, you only get 40 seconds, so the boat wasn't able to go all the way around. Right. Target practice. Target practice. Uh, target practice is also really nice. It suggests more things to you that you might not think to do yourself. You, you, sometimes you complete a gap that you might not even know was there. And also it gives you sort of a suggested path to take. Which is nice, like when, when to jump, you know, when to ride up the ramp, when to jump. Um, this one's a little, this one's just a little weird, but like the first one and the third one, they basically kind of guide you through them, and I think they do that the whole game. Now I haven't actually like gotten to, I I haven't actually gotten to the last level, but I I I believe that the target practice. Uh, challenges in all the levels give you um, suggested path. Video shoot is the one thing I'd get rid of. Um, it puts the camera in front of the boat, but the controls aren't like inverted, so when you push left, your guy goes to the right of the screen, which is kind of hard to keep track of. And if you crash, it's over. Like you have to restart again. 
which gets tougher in later levels when you don't know what's ahead of you, because you can play a level over and over and over, but only once you do the video shoot mode do you realize, uh, uh, how, how much you really know the level. Yeah. <sighs> that, yeah, I would get rid of that. And then, of course, uh, count to ten is count to five, but keeping the combo going, usually as well with that, you can just trust in the boat again. Like, again, I didn't even have to jump. Yeah, and then you had to know to let go. Yeah, otherwise the boat would have pushed me forward, and, you know, first time I played, I didn't let go. Missed that once, but never again. Never again. <laughs> and then the tricky gap is also another thing that tells you something you might not have ever thought to do for yourself. In this case, it's, you know, doing some really complex um, thing that's actually pretty cool to pull off and not as hard as it seems. Like, I usually, the boat doesn't usually come over here for me because I think you need to hit that path switch that's on the rails for it to do. But, you know, the game tells you where to go. You know, it's not like, okay, what do I do next? The difficulty is in the execution rather than riding around a level trying to find a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean, it's just... It just works. It wasn't too hard, and I, I wouldn't have thought to do that myself, you know? That was pretty cool, yeah. I would say this this game seems pretty cool. Yeah, the game is, like I said, very good. And I think next to Downhill Domination, I'd say this is probably one of the better games, you know, that I've... One of the better extreme sports games of this... LP. Of this genre. Uh, if you were looking to get a early 2000s extreme sports game, you know, you might consider this one. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, wakeboarding, like uh, like has been shown, gives you uh, quite a few more options than, yeah. you know, skateboarding or... Uh, oh, wow, that's a lot of levels, too. Well, two of those are, like, competition levels, sort of. It'll make sense, but... The second level in Wake Warrior Unleashed is the Bayou, and next episode, I'll see you there.